Hey guys, and welcome to a new video on this deep learning on artificial intelligence tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about and have an introduction to attention and transformers. So this is the newest state of the art within like deep learning architectures and st stuff like that. So we're going to cover like the basic overall about attention and transformers. And then we're going to have a playlist where we're actually like, going to cover more about transformers, how we can actually like, create your own transformers in both Keras, PyTorch, and so on. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. Only 10% of you guys are watching these videos here are actually like, subscribed to the channel. It's just a single click and it helped me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and build the quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can help you out in your projects. If you have some problems, I can help you out, give some guidance if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So in this video here, we're just going to have a short introduction to like attention uh, and attention mechanism and also the transformer architecture. So first of all here, we will dive into the attention is all you need paper. We will go through like what it is, what is the architecture of a transformer, what is attention, how, what can be used for and so on. And then we're going to look at some results. This is just a short introduction and then we're going to dive deep more into it in another video where we're going to talk about like how can we use it for like for example computer vision, how can we use attention and transformers within computer vision and so on because attention is all you need is actually like implemented or like is actually like created for natural language processing but it can also be used for computer vision and is actually like the, uh, the state of the art architecture right now uh, within computer vision. So here we're just going to look at the paper, we're going to cover some of the details, we're going to look at some of the graphs that they have, uh, so we can actually like get a bit more insight into like what are attention mechanisms and also what is transformers and what does it replace within deep learning. So first of all here we can see in the introduction that they're mentioning something called recurring neural networks, which we have talked about here on the channel, Strong, long short term memory, gated recurring neural networks and, and so on, which is actually like used for sequential modeling. So when we have like sequential data, we can actually like use these different kind of like neural network architectures. But the problem with these architectures is that they're actually like taking in like all um, all the inputs or like all the data in like sequentially so they just take it in like one input at a time so we have like just serial connections with the neural networks where when we're talking about transformers and attention mechanism we can actually like pass in our data in parallel so instead of we just have sequential data sequences now we can actually like work with parallel um, data sequences so it will speed up the process a lot and we can actually like also gain more information in our actual like data with these transformers so if you just scroll down here, first of all, we have an introduction, then we have some backgrounds of like, why do we actually like want to create these transformers with the attention mechanism, then we'll see the model architecture here. And then this is the main architecture of the transformer. So we have this model architecture of the transformer in figure one of this paper. Then we can see we actually like have some inputs, then we need to convert them into an input embedding. So we actually like need to embed those so we can pass that into our transformer. We use something called a positional encoder. And here in this transformer, they actually like just use some sinusoidal signals to do the actual input embedding. So let's say that we just have one sequence, uh, one text sequence that we want to pass into our transformer. Then we like to like just convert those or like we will create an embedding of those inputs. Uh, from our data sequence so that will be maybe a text so a cat is wearing a hat then we will convert that to our with our positional encodings and then we have our input embeddings and then we can actually like pa pass that those into our uh, encoder and our decoder of our transformer architecture so here on the left we can actually like see our encoder and on the right here we can see our decoder of our transformer architecture First of all here, we first of all, we have this n, uh, n times here. So this that will be our intention layer. So we have our multi-head attention, which we'll cover in, in the figure, uh, in the next figure here. So here we have our encoder to the left. So I'll just make a circle around our encoder. And then we also have our decoder over here to the right of our transformer architecture. So now when we have our input data down here at the bottom, so this will be our input. Then we have something called multi-head attention, which I'm going to cover shortly. And then we just have a standard add here. So we're basically just going to add the weights here of our, uh, or like add our inputs here with our um, output from our multi-head attention. And then we're going to do a layer normalization in between those. And then we basically just have a like standard MLP or like multi-layer perception where we have a feed forward. So just a standard uh, feed forward neural network here um, in the end of our act like encoder of our uh, transformer. And then we're just, just going to add our input with our output here again. And then we're going to normalize it once more. So that is our encoder. Then we actually like have our, uh, our um, decoder over here to the right. So we have our outputs over here where we have the shifted right. So we have our output embeddings. We're going to do the exact same thing with our outputs 
uh, with our positional encoder as we did with our encoder. And then we can basically just pass that through our mask multi-head attention. Then we just have a number of these different kind of attention blocks. We have our add and our normalization. We have another multi-head attention. And then we have a feed forward layer. Then at the end here, we have a linear layer before we're going to do softmax uh, for our output probabilities because if you want actually like, want to do some classification of like is this mail a spam or is it not a spam we actually like, want to have our so basically we can just have a mail where we just like pass in the mail as input into our input embeddings then we also have our output embeddings for that mail if it's spam or not spam and then at the end here of our transformer we can actually like, get a probability of is this email here is or is this text here in the email is this spam or is it not spam so this can be used for a lot of different kind of things and this is breakthrough within like natural language processing and it's also state of the art and a breakthrough within computer vision right now because when we're going to talk about computer vision we actually like just um we actually just we can use transformers as it is in this architecture here but the inputs here we're actually like going to create patches of our images and then we'll just like some kind of like map those patches to, to words um, as we do here in natural language processing and then we can use transformers as we do in NLP. So here we can see we have our encoder and decoder stack. You can read more about it here in the paper. But here we can see that the encoder is composed of stack of n equal to six identical layers. So this will be, um, I'm just going to mark it here. So this will be this, uh, this, uh, this block here of code, uh, like this block here in our decoder or like in our encoder. And then we have our decoder over here to the right. And we can see we have six identical layers of this block here to the left. And then here for our decoder, we also have six uh, identical layers. Then we're going to use something called the attention mechanism. So we want to attend to something in our uh, in our data. So let's say that we have a mail, we have a sequence of our text or like we have a text sequence. Then we want to attend to some words in the mail. So if we, for example, again, we just um, we just used uh, the sentence like a cat is wearing a hat. Then we probably want in that sentence we want, probably want to pay attention to cat and also hat wear like d and and wearing like maybe wearing is also good to pay attention to but a is probably not so if we just take that sequence we want to pay attention to a cat we want to pay attention to wearing and a hat then we actually like just need those three words and we can pay attention like we can pay more attention to those words than all the other words and again remember that we're passing in our data uh, parallel instead of having this uh, serial data input to our neural networks as we do in recurrent neural networks and so on. So now we have this um, attention mechanism here. So this is our scale uh, dot product attention. And then we have our multi-head attention over here to the right. So this multi-head attention is basically just a block, um, the block here, I'm just going to like cover this. So this is actually like the block that is just used up here in our multi-head attention within our encoder and our decoder. So this is the exact same blocks that we have here and then all the other things here is just like basic add here of our different kind of inputs and our outputs from a multi-head attention and also just a standard uh, normalization layer here in between. So basically this is a really simple architecture when you just get to know it and it's actually like really easy to implement as we're going to cover later on in another video um, how we're going to actually like implement it in both Keras, uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch. So here we can see that we have our scale dot product here in the middle. So this is one layer. We have a linear layer, linear layer, and linear layer here. So we both have this V, K, and Q. So we have, have a value. We also have a key, and then we also have a query. So this is the data here that we pass in. Then we have our scale dot product attention. So this is actually consisting of like just like um, matrix multiplication. So we have our query and we have a key. And then we just multiply those matrices together. We scale it. Then we create an, a mask here, which is optional. Then we use the softmax, uh, softmax, uh, um, softmax function here, activation function. Then we're going to multiply that output from our softmax activation function with the value here. So we have these three different kind of values, and we will get those values from our positional encodings. So these positional or like input embeddings here with our positional encodings would actually like throw back these. Um, with these uh, queries, keys, and also the values here. So we get three different kind of like inputs here that we can use in our scaled dot product attention. And then that scaled product attention, we actually use that uh, down here over to the right. We then concatenate all the outputs here that we get from our values, our keys, and our queries. After we have done this scaled dot product attention, we just concatenate that for H layers. We can see we have an H over here to the right. So that, that is actually just eight multi-hit attention layers that we can have and then we're basically just concatenating all of that we pass it through a linear activation function and that will be the output of our multi-hit attention 
So this is basically the overall structure of our transformer. So this is our, we have an encoder, we have an, uh, an, an decoder, and then we just have this multi-head attention together with these MLPs, not, not layer normalizations and so on. In another video, we're going to cover more about how we can do this positional encoding, but basically just, we, we just have our data. We can pass it in in parallel. We pass it into our input embeddings. We have our positional encoders that convert our data so we can pass it in through our attention mechanism, which is our multi-head attention. Then we just have standard MLPs in our encoder. We can decode it and then we can actually get probabilities of like what do we actually like want to solve with our transformer uh, and our deep learning architecture. So you can read more about it here in the actual like paper. You can also get some application of our attention model. Uh, so we can actually have some self attention and so on. But the main idea is that we want to pay attention to something in our data and we want to like act like attend to that. And then we're going to use that information to actually like do both classification, regression and so on, uh, as we already know with all the other different kind of neural networks architecture that we have. So here you talk about like the embeddings and also the softmax activation function. So they actually like have this positional encoding. We can see the different kind of like layer types that they used. We can see the complexity of it and so on. You can de you can dive more into that if you want to. Here we're just going to have a short introduction and then we can cover more details later on. So here we can see that the sinus all the signals. So we're using both a sine and also a cosine to do the positional encodings for the different kind of like indexes or the positions of our data. So here we just have our position of our data and then we just pass it through this um, through this like formula here and we get out a positional encoding um, index and then we can use that track like C or like we can actually like keep track of what is our input when we pass it through our model where is it in the sequence so we just have an, an like text sequence we just pass it into a model but we also but we also want to like still keep the knowledge of like where is the words and what sequence is the actual like words so we don't like mess it up so we have like wearing cat a hat for example so we want to have like the, the, the acts like words and we want to have the positions as well and that is also going to be really important when we're going to work with computer vision and images here with transformers so you can read more we can see like how we can train it uh, the different kind of like optimizers like how they're using regularization to train the neural networks they're comparing some of the models here with the transformers with some other different kind of like uh, previous models and so on we can see the results for machine translation model variation so we can also use it for uh, variations in our models it can be used for a lot of different kind of applications and also computer vision as i've mentioned um here we're just going to scroll down we can see the conclusion here and then we're just getting a lot of different kind of like references here but again this architecture is really cool it can be used for a lot of different kind of things and it's actually like this newest state-of-the-art um state-of-the-art neural networks so thank you guys for watching this video here and again remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video here it just really helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way also hit the like button here and comment down under the video if you want to know more details about like transformers how it can be used and all these different kind of things i'm also doing a computer vision tutorial where we talk about like the big basic image operation like camera calibration stereo vision how we can get depth information with cameras how we can use that to create point cloud post estimation optic detection and so on so if you're interested in that tutorial i'll link to it up here or else i'll see you next video guys bye for now